Hello, hello, hello there, and welcome to Tech Tuesday's little bit different this week. Uh, so this week, rather than opening a product on the desk and uh, looking at a product, we are going to be discussing something. So um, if you look in the very, very top right-hand corner, you may notice something slightly different. Uh, if you're shuddering now, I'll give you a quick clue. It is four line sound. Uh, it goes most of the way across the page, and that is where it says uh, CPU 16x AMD Ryzen 7 1700 8 core processor. So, I have finally, I say finally, I've literally only uh, had it about six months. Oh, I really thought I'd opened that door. Never mind. Uh, yeah, so I felt I've only had it about six months actually, which isn't very long, uh, but that computer has provided um, you know, it's been a good purchase for the time I've had it I think um, but I'm essentially a freelance filmmaker uh, in addition to doing this um, and as that uh, I really needed a computer that was a decent editing rig and for simple short projects like if I still were just sticking to YouTube videos I think I probably wouldn't have bothered with the uh, getting something but I want a computer that is built for editing. Um, so I got rid of the Phenom 2, um, rebuilt the computer, I say rebuilt, yeah, it's a new lots, most things in fact, and um, I rebuilt it in an old computer case I had lying around. So um, yes, we're now rocking the AMD Ryzen 7 1700, uh, which has 8 cores uh, and 16 threads. Uh, so AMD now has something like Intel's hyper-threading, they call it SMT, I don't remember off the top of my head what that stands for, but that's why it says 16 in the top corner there. Um, it's also now got 16 gigabytes of RAM. So, as it's an editing machine, uh, let's go and have a look at a practical test for that. Uh, so if we head over to Premiere Pro. So to test it out and compare how the new CPU was performing against the old one, uh, I made this slightly outrageous Premiere file. Um, so this is just a project in Premiere Pro. And <coughs> more here is uh, I'm testing to an extent colour and length. So this is 6 hours, 40 minutes, 43 seconds and 10 frames of footage. And this is all the first six parts of Creativeverse and the first six parts of No Man's Sky. All of the first six parts of Creativeverse have ridiculous kind of colour correction stuff on them. So if you look here I bumped the contrast right up and really messed around with a lot of the saturation stuff. I don't really play with that too much. But this this is you know, this is something it, it should struggle to render a bit. Um so that's kind of one test. So this computer, I didn't. I should have done a playback test on the old one because it's more rendering that, and playback that this is struggling with. I'm just gonna cut off the audio for that. So it is more, like I was saying, uh, render test. I should have done a playback test on the old computer uh, once I get it up and running again. I might have to do another one. Um, but it's got this this colour correction stuff on it. But it's played back nicely, full quality, no jumps. Let's just skip forwards a bit. Yeah, it's not struggling to play that at all. It's using 9.5 gigabytes of RAM at the moment with OBS running as well. So I'd, I would estimate that the old PC would be struggling with this. Um, then I made a second file. Uh, which is this first 6 hour, 40 minute, 43 second, 10 frame file sped up by 8014.44% to 5 minutes um, I don't think the playback here is going to be anywhere near as good it's already spiking my RAM use or it could work perfectly so I think, I don't know how such this should be actually I should have, I've always been deleting the export because but it is playing back fine and I can tell you from when I did work on the 24 hour project for Earthsleep speeding things up it just really really struggled 
if it wasn't at normal speed. So yeah, I lined both of these up for export. Now granted, especially this one, uh, like I said, I should have done the playback test. Um, but it's more rendering intensive rather than more export intensive. Um, but I did export them. So here is the export. So um, again, I'm rendering using the GPU. It's the same GPU, so the GTX 960. Um, same preset for YouTube Gaming 1080, which is what I use for everything. So this was the preset that the original videos were exported in. So it should be, should be any compatibility issues there. Again, same operating system. The only difference between these uh, is obviously the motherboard, CPU, and RAM. So I guess this is almost more of a system to system comparison than a, just a CPU to CPU. As for more accurate, I would have probably had to uh, take one of the RAM DIMMs out of this one just so it's eight gigabytes. But it's so it's just consider it more of a system to system comparison rather than just the CPUs. I think it is also a good indicator of the Ryzen seven versus the Phenom two. Just watch these results back here. So very uh, quickly off there, uh, we saw uh, the Ryzen seven actually took a second longer. Uh, from clicking the start button to actually get it going. In fact, looking at the times there, it's about five seconds. Um, but it quickly makes up for a lost time. Uh, I also have Task Manager open there, um, which is showing you the speed. You may notice I said earlier that the Ryzen 7 uh, clocks at 3 gigahertz. Uh, it does clock at 3 gigahertz, but I believe it has a, a turbo boost of up to 3.7 gigahertz, which it should just enable automatically. And so that's why it has accelerated itself to 3.29 or 3.3 gigahertz here. Um, immediately, it's only actually using about half the co half to 60 percent of the core and hovering around 49.50 centigrade, uh, whereas the Phenom 2 is 90 to 100 percent utilization all the time it has a slightly higher clock speed there um just by 100 megahertz um but it looks like the cores are really helping the ryzen there and the phenom is hovering about 42 centigrade so in fact it's pretty much only 42 centigrade so it is remaining cooler there um one thing i will say just in the phenom's defense quickly is a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a very, very hot period for a time in Britain. And uh, I ran this test on, like, the hottest day of the year. Um, although, looking, I have watched back of the video at like, the, the hottest times of the day. And it doesn't look like it gets too hot. It doesn't look like there's any thermal throttling or anything. Um, so, I'm counting it as a, a valid test. Um, so, I'm just going to speed these clips up and we'll see which completes the first clip first. So we sped these up by 10,000%, uh, just so it was a some reasonable time. Um, so let's see which completes that first clip first there. And it's the Ryzen 7 1700 in a time of 15 minutes and 9 seconds. The Phenom 2 is quite a bit slower on that first clip, finally finishing in a time of 36 minutes and 33 seconds. And then both move on to that second clip there. Um, one thing I find really interesting is the 7 1700 doesn't actually seem to actually peak out CPU utilization. It highest seems to be high 80s and quite often it's as low as 50%. Um, whereas the Phenom 2 is flat out 100% all the time. So in theory you could probably do something else while exporting with the 7 1700. Where the Phenom, that wasn't advisable. Uh, Temperature-wise, the uh, Phenom, no, the, the Ryzen, sorry, it does seem to be keeping a little bit hotter, uh, peaking at around 58, uh, 61 is the maximum apparently, um, but holding high 50s generally, whereas the Phenom is kind of mid to low 50s, so 53, 54 mostly, uh, high of 54 there.
it's starting to pick up a little bit more now as time presses on. So it actually the bar completes in a time of 3 hours and 23 minutes. However it doesn't actually go to the green tick for a, another little while. So I'm not having it officially completed until the 3 hour 50 minute and the 14 second mark. We leave the Phenom 2 still going. We've also bumped up the speed to 10,531%. So uh, the Phenom's starting to get a little bit hotter. This could be like I was saying earlier, it was a hot day. It could be just because it's getting hotter because of the day, or just because it's putting out so much heat itself and it's just keeping a bit hotter. And it's still not too bad, it's still staying lower than the Ryzen did, just, uh, but mid to high 50s there it is holding. Uh, but a continuous 100% utilisation there. So just like the Ryzen did, it stops and it hangs um, for a few seconds, or a few minutes. Um, so it officially stopped the bar going across at 12 hours and 10 minutes and 25 frames. However, it did officially properly complete at 12 hours, 42 minutes and 10 seconds. So just to uh, round up, let's have a look at the results again. So the Ryzen 7 1700 in the first video, and again this is the video that was probably more render intensive. Uh, it wasn't very really long, it was only 5 minutes, but there was 6 hours worth of information within that 5 minutes. Uh, so that took about uh, 15 minutes and 9 seconds on the 1700, uh, and 36 minutes and 33 seconds on the Phenom 2. Uh, so the Ryzen just slightly faster than twice as fast on that one. And then we come to the second video, which is more interesting really, as um, Media Encoder stops counting it as extra time uh, you know, duration uh, at the first timing, so about 3 hours 23 minutes. Um, but we, we then had that hang where it didn't look like it was doing anything, the CPU usage went down, right down. Um, so I'm guessing it was just kind of moving around background files. Um, but we've got that half an hour hang there between it actually finishing the encoding and it actually saying it's finished and we go to the green tick. Uh, and I think in th this must be to do with background files and hard drive speed. But they are the same hard drives in both computers, uh, both running Windows 10. Because we have the exact same hang from pretty much the same time uh, with the Phenom as well. So I think it must just be doing something with background files uh, because this is obviously a six hour file and it's taking half an hour extra to do that whereas the actual encode time was only 3 hours 23 for the Ryzen and 12 hours and 10 minutes for the Phenom. So the Ryzen is what, almost 4 times faster with that which is just incredible I think. Um, again even with the hang it doesn't make any difference whatsoever because the hang is pretty much exactly half an hour. Temperature wise, um, the Ryzen 7 1700 hit about 61 centigrade, whereas the Phenom 2 hit about 58 centigrade. Um, so the 7 is rocking um, its stock cooler, whereas the Phenom 2 was using a Hyper Evo 212 uh, with two fans on it, uh, 220 millimeter fans on it. Um, and it. But it was that hot day for the Phenom, so I reckon it would have probably hit low to mid 50s rather than 58 if it had been a day of a similar temperature that I did the Ryzen test. But neither of these is outrageous temperatures. I don't think either of these are thermal throttling. Um, in fact, the Ryzen 7, the highest I've seen it hit is about that, even under maximum load, uh, under synthetic maximum load. So I would say the cooler is pretty pretty decent that comes with it. And it is a higher rated cooler than the CPU is. So I think that probably helps too. But yes, yeah, so to round up... Um, AMD is seriously not messing around with Ryzen. If you want a good processor for a video editing machine, the Ryzen 7 series is definitely <coughs> a good line to be going down. Um, especially if you've got an older Phenom or FX series CPU. Um, I mean, we're matching the, the performance of some Intel or even some high-end Intel chips here. Uh, we're doing it for half the price. So uh, I think Ryzen is here and I think Ryzen is here to stay. Um, 
I've also done a couple more bits since then. I think I lined up about five twenty-minute videos, and it knocks them all off in less than an hour. So I, I'm seriously impressed with it. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this video, which is a comparison between the Ryzen 7 1700 and the Phenom 2 X4965 Black Edition. Uh, I hope to see you again. Uh, thanks for watching Tech Tuesdays.